So there are two key pieces for meaningful use. So these are the core measurements. There's also um, quality measurements. And it's not stated here, but there are core measurements and then there are quality measurements. So we're gonna talk about the, the meaningful use categories first. In the meaningful use, there are 15 core which must be done. The core means they're, they're, they're mandated. There's also 10 menu objectives. And out of the menu, you only have to choose five of the 10 in order to qualify. So this is the actual 15. So for example, if you um, look at the second one here under the core 15, and these are the ones that, are the, um, that you absolutely have to do. Under the second one, it's implement drug to drug and drug allergy interaction checks. The measurement is that the eligible provider has enabled the functionality for the entire reporting period. So what does that mean? It means you've turned it on, that your system has it, that it's eligible, that, it, that, it's, that your product that you're using does a drug to drug, drug allergy interaction check and that you are, have enabled that. That's a pretty easy measurement for you. Um, if you um, maintain active medication list, more than 80% of your unique patients seen by the eligible provider have at least one entry um, or indication that the patient is not currently on a medication um, recorded as structured data. So what it says is if, you, if you're, you know, during the reporting period that you're gonna report on, 80% 80, 80 of those patients that you actually see, you have to collect whether or not they're taking a med or not and that you're putting it in a structured data. Again, it's not a difficult thing to do. I think when you look at the core, what the government has done is really greatly <clears throat> lowered the bar and made this very feasible to do. The second piece of this is the menu set. In the menu set, there are 10 choices. Out of the 10 choices, you have to choose at least one that's a population health objective. So that's at least, it, you either have to choose number nine or number 10, in this case, as one of your five. So let's look at what those 10 are. Very easy, I think, to pick your five that you want to do from here um, based on your patients that you're seeing. But, um, oh, let's see, what, which one do I normally do? Um, the, again, the first one is really simple. Um, implement drug formulary checks. And again, that's just enabling the functionality. So there's one of your five. Uh, the second one, incorporate clinical lab test results as, as into certified EHR technology as structured data. So I bet all of you probably have an interface to Quest or LabCorp or something. Information's coming in as structured data. The, uh, the objective measurement is that 40% of your clinical lab results um, ordered by the eligible provider, um, and it goes into the hospital information here, um, 40% during the EHR reporting period whose results are either in a positive or negative or numerical format or incorporated into the da structured data. So what does that mean? That they made, they made it a no-brainer, right? I mean, really, that's what that means. So it's a positive or negative results, comes back, you've got a positive or negative, or you have a, a number. So your BUN is 12, I don't know. But, you know, it's a number. So as long as it's a structured data, a number, or a positive or negative, 40% of that has to be captured in the structured data format. So what it means is if you have a consult, if you've got um, any, any type of a descriptive that's in that lab result, you are not having to capture that near 40%. So you choose five of these, you do all 15 of the other, that helps you meet the meaningful use criteria. There's also clinical quality measures we're gonna talk about in a moment. Um, there are some exclusions. If, for instance, um, you are a practice that does not see patients that would, for instance, cause you to prescribe, then you would not need to do the e-prescribe component. So if you demonstrate that you see patients that do not fall into that criteria, then you do not have to do it. And you just note that those are your patients. Um, it's really important when you get to the clinical quality, I believe. So. Um, First set, meaningful use criteria. Second step, set clinical quality measures. The great news about the clinical quality measures is originally, I think there were around 45. There was a significant list of things that the government really wanted you to capture and demonstrate for clinical quality. Um, they have reduced that to six. Um, significant reduction in stage one to six. And, and um, out of the six that you required, 
three are mandate and three are choices. So your three mandate is to capture tobacco use, blood pressure, and adult weight. Those are the three mandate. Um, the alternative, let's say you don't see adults and you're a pediatrician, then there are some alternatives that you can use to substitute in for those criteria. Um, there, there are three, and, and frankly, you know, if you think about that, there's probably very few clinicians today that are not capturing or asking, do you smoke? And, and capturing your blood pressure and your weight when you walk in the door. Everyone, everyone does. So they've made it very, very simple for you to meet the clinical quality piece of meaningful use. Um, the other three that you choose are from a list of 38. So um, I don't have the whole list here, but there is a very extensive list of 38 quality measurements, but it's very easy, I think, for you to pick a few of these, and all you have to have are three. For instance, um, if you wanted to, um, breast cancer screening. So breast cancer screening is one of them, and you, let's see you, say, you see women um, between the ages of 40 and 69. What it wants to know is what percentage of those women have had a mammo. That's what it wants. It's a very simple thing. You would have asked every woman that came in your door anyway. Um, you'll find easily that you'll be able to choose three of these that will not probably disrupt your practice today. Um, so those are the two pieces. You need to meet the meaningful use criteria, the 15 mandate, the five choice, the clinical quality measures, which are the three mandate and the three choice.